Hello. Today we're going to learn how to use IT data analytics to collect syslog data. And in this particular case, we're going to pull it from a Mac OS system, um, which is essentially Mac OS in this day and age is essentially a Linux system. So this method could be used to collect syslog data from just about any type of uh, source data. So let's get started. You can see that I've already logged into the TrueSight IT Data Analytics uh, 2.5 console as admin. You can see that in the upper right corner. I have navigated to the Administration tab, and I have gone to the Data Collectors tab, which is really kind of a starting point for ITDA. This is a brand new installation for me. Um, I just set this up, and I have created one was created automatically, this first one here, and then I created one to monitor the ITDA logs as well. But let's get started with our syslog attempt. So we're going to click the green plus sign to create a new data collector. And in this particular case, what we're going to be doing is monitoring a file over SSH. And you notice that the screen changes when I do that, and it gives me the opportunity to make quite a few other selections. And I'm going to put a name in here for this. You monitor file over SSH. The target host, you can see that I have hosts set up already. Um, and that's obviously done under the host tab on this same screen. I've just simply gone in and identified some um, servers that are in my small lab environment. And this one right here is my iMac. And we're going to use the standard collection station. And in this particular case, we can provide a credential. We also have the option to provide a stored security credential. So if you have um, a standard service account that you might use in your environment and you want to store that credential or have, for example, a database admin come and type in that credential so that they're not sharing it with the, the monitoring team, for example, they can just you can just apply a stored credential. But in this particular case, I know the credential, so I'm going to go ahead and type it in. And I know that in this particular case on Mac OS, the syslog data is stored um, on the primary hard drive in a directory called private slash var slash log. And you put the trailing slash there. And I'm just going to leave that alone there. And I know that I'm looking for system.log. And this is the kind of research that you have to do when you're doing a new data collector and you're trying to get to uh, an endpoint. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit different. That's not what the content packs in ITDA mean. Those are not necessarily configurations to go get information. Um, but you do have to do a little research on your endpoint and go figure out what it is you're trying to collect and where it resides on your target system. So now I'm all set. I can hit auto detect. And what that's going to do is it's going to go and it's going to see if it can figure out what kind of data pattern my log file is in. It's also a good test that it can, number one, get to the endpoint in question and that my credential that I'm using is valid. If any of those things are incorrect at this point, when I hit auto detect, I'll get a failure and say it can't reach the endpoint or it can't log in or what have you. In this particular case, it looks like we've done very well and it was able to get to my endpoint and pull up some log data. And what it's done here over on the left is ITDA has given me some suggestions about the format of the data it's read because you have to tell it what kind of data pattern is ITDA going to be reading, right? It doesn't necessarily know that automatically. It can figure some things out, but there's some choices. We could use free text without a timestamp. Um, looking at the data, ITDA thinks it could be either an F5 load balancer or our other choice is syslog. And you see when I click syslog, it goes there and it reformats the data. And you can see that obviously this is in my home office lab because this is dad's iMac. So once we've figured that out, we can apply the pattern. So now we know the, the date and timestamp that it should be looking for. Um, the poll interval we're going to leave at one minute, and you can change this to be whatever it is. Um, if you have a certain kind of log data that does not get updated very often, um, that could certainly be something smaller. Um, I like to include tags. That's important. Um, it, it helps with the um, different things that you do later, with the safe searches, with the dashboards, with all the things that you use ITDA for. The more tags that you put in here to identify your data sources and what you're collecting, the more useful it will be. Um, I created the Mac OS X before when I was testing this, but we could create a new one. We could say Mac um, OS X, and we could say this is 
right? So you know, we make a new one and we hit the new flag right here and hit add. We could also say our location, right? And I do have some locations already built out, office lab. We could add that one as well. And we can add other things if we wanted to. We could say the department, the app group, different things that we might find relevant to our environment, right? And once we've done all that, we can simply hit create and it created the data collector successfully. And we can see here's our new data collector. And eventually, if everything's working correctly, this little area here will turn green like the other data collectors in the poll status. If there's any kind of problem, if you see uh, red or yellow, that will tell you that there's some kind of issue. Um, red usually means it's not collecting any data whatsoever. It can't get to it or something's failed. Uh, yellow indicates that it's doing something, but it's not exactly right. There's something happening in the background that you may want to pay attention to. Um, so that's our how to collect data.